people are posting on social media these days. Advertising and misinformation are being blamed for causing people to take a more passive approach to social media. A new report finds Instagram is the most likely social media app to be deleted based on the number of searches online for how to delete my account. China is having a change of heart after a proposal to restrict online gaming sparked a financial meltdown. The proposal would limit how much gamers in China are allowed to spend. The proposal triggered an $80 billion sell-off in gaming stocks. Those new rules are now under review. And a federal judge has cleared the way for employees of X to sue over unpaid bonuses. The company, formerly known as Twitter, is accused of failing to honor repeated promises to pay the 2022 bonuses after it was acquired by Elon Musk. I hear Santa's workshop doesn't give out bonuses at all. The workers are all elf employed. Those are your tech bites. All right, welcome back. So this is something we talked about through the day. Florida's Cocoa Beach hosting the annual Surfing Santa Day on Christmas Eve, as you probably imagine. And you can see right there, hundreds of Santas and elves headed to the waves. It's the 15th year. It draws thousands of surfers and onlookers, many dressed in elaborate Christmas beach gear. Uh, it's a tradition which organizers say began as a simple family beach day. It's become a beloved tradition. Combining Florida sunshine and, oh, and the Christmas Grinch spirit. and the Grinch is there. Surfing Santas rode the waves as spectators and participants enjoyed live music and costume contests. All right. So it has been nice out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's been surfing weather nice, though. Probably not quite there. No. <laughs> uh, it, listen, it looks like it was kind of cold there. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. they're at the beach, but it probably was a little chilly. But still, the Santa was enjoying it. Santa can deal with all kinds of weather. Uh, 61 degrees today is what we're looking at. Mostly sunny. There are some clouds out there right now. We may see some patches of clouds from time to time, but I think the sun comes out uh, later today. 63 Wednesday, 61 Thursday, cold mornings, nice afternoon. That's kind of the theme as we wrap up 2022, 2023. Why can't I get my years right? <laughs> it's been a year. I cannot keep it straight. Uh, we're going to 2024. That's yeah. hard to imagine. Uh, and yeah, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day looks good. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. For those of you who joined us all day since 5 a.m., thank you so much. Appreciate you. SA Live starts right now. Hey, big show today, Cleto. Huh? Got all your jokes ready? Cleto? Cleto? It started like any other day. I was trying to refill my trusty stapler when she walked in my door. Oh, I heard you were moonlighting as a private detective between the hours of GMSA and SA Live. I'm glad the rumors were true. Mike Oster H, I need your help. A terrible crime has been committed on the SA Live set. What's the crime? Our SA Live guest, Cleto Rodriguez, has been murdered. Where's Cleto? Well, I, I don't know. He might be in the morgue. I, I don't see what that matters. I don't either, but just every morning, I have this, this feeling where I have to ask, where's Cleto? All right, to solve this heinous crime, mm. we're gonna have to retrace his steps. Well, he was at my annual Halloween party last night at the St. Anthony Hotel. That's where we'll start. Mm. Fear not, because Michael P.I. Osterhage is on the case, and I got your back. place you got here is St. Anthony and Doreen Patino, who's in charge. Swanky spot for a soiree. It is a swanky spot. Isn't it gorgeous? Our beautiful hotel filled with beautiful art that our initial owner searched the world over and brought all these beautiful antiques, empire furniture, the art, all of these beautiful things that our guests enjoyed in the past and they enjoy now. 
We have so many things. We've entertained many different entertainers. We've entertained families for third and fourth generation events, weddings. It's a beautiful spot. You think of a hotel as a place to stay the night, which great spot for a staycation for locals, but also a good spot if you just want to come and have a little drink, a little entertainment, a little some good drink. food, right? Downstairs. Have a little drink in the St. Anthony Hotel, which is also a very historic place. It's where, where Southwest Airlines came about. It has a beautiful lobby area, which we call Peacock Alley, with gorgeous chandeliers. And they have jazz night there on Tuesday night, played right there on our beautiful antique hotel, 1927 Steinway. Please, it's gorgeous. Well, if you'd like more information about the St. Anthony Hotel, all of the things they have going on, such as jazz night down in the lobby with that piano from the Russian Embassy, just go to salive.com, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or scan the QR code right there at the bottom of your screen. I was just thinking, this is where that party was last night. Hey Fiona, the party's great. These drinks are delicious. Fantastic. Are you having a good time, Jeff? Oh yes, I'm having a marvelous time. I was just telling Cleto how much I admire his comedy and I can't wait for another show at Mi Familia. Mi Familia has the best fajitas. Have you had them, Jeff? Yes, they're my favorite. I had some earlier this morning. Well, I have a comedy show I need to run to. I hate to leave early, but this party has... I just got a notification that I won a Spurs jersey signed by Wimby! Go, go Spurs, go! Go, go Spurs, Spurs, go! This place is haunted, you know. Aha! So, it was the supernatural that got Cleto. Is that your professional opinion, detective? Journalist Jen, we meet again. Here to write another story about one of my cases. Oh, I'll be following up every step of the way on this case with facts. The case that way. <laughs> you won't have much to write about because I already solved this one. It was a ghost. That's fun, but you should probably start with living suspects. The mystery was turning upside down and I had to think fast so journalist Jen wouldn't beat me to the next clue. So maybe it wasn't a ghost, but there were some pretty tasty libations being served up at that soiree. Let's question the bartender. I was just going to say that. Lillian Oler, a simple cocktail workshop owner here, Mike. So, we, these are some of the cocktails we are serving up at the soiree, huh? Yes, absolutely. We here have, um, first up, a coffee drink. That was what they enjoyed first. There's uh, some cold brew in here, some vanilla vodka, a black charcoal-infused pumpkin spice syrup. Mm -hmm. uh, we shook <laughs> it up pretty well. So pumpkin spice with charcoal. Activated charcoal. You gotta make sure that you're not um, gonna be interfering with any medications Strain when you it. have that. Yes, please. All right, here we go. Over the big hunk of ice right there. This is our smoking gun Ooh. cocktail. Literally. The smoking gun. Wow. That's beautiful. What's the next drink? Detective Mike will try that, yes. We have here our um, bloody knife cocktail. If you want to press that lime over there, we'll go ahead and save the outside shell, um, and then we'll fill it up with the, our um, creme de cassis. What is creme de cassis? Creme de cassis is a black currant liqueur. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, Jen, if you want to just fill up this little lime here mm -hmm. with some of that. Creme de cassis, Ooh. add a nice fruity note to it. Looks like a bloody good drink, <laughs> if the English do say so. <laughs> it's a little gnarly shit here. A little knife. knife. And let the... Oh. I think it needs to go. Look yeah. how that just falls down. 
the crushed ice, the, the little touches. Yes. yes. What that is is crushed ice, tequila, ginger beer, and lime. Really refreshing sip. Pretty gory looking too. You know, in this way, fun for a party. Crowd pleaser. Yes. Two great cocktails at that soiree. What else you got? All right. So our third cocktail, we actually batched this one um, ahead of time. This is arsenic and old lace. Um, it has gin, creme de violette. Um, you're gonna spray some absinthe here in our little Nick and Nora glass. Okay. You wouldn't mind spraying that on the inside. There's also. What does this add to it? Um, it adds like an herbaceous kind of spice to this cocktail. Yes. And we'll go ahead. And pour that Smell in that. here. Detective That's pre-batched, so nobody <laughs> is going to be going home with too much absinthe in their body. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes, yes. You want to. <laughs> so this one's very strong. Limit this one. It yeah. is very strong. It used to be an equal parts cocktail. Um, since we have made sure that people don't have equal parts of gin and absinthe um, in their cocktails. We've very much reduced oh, the amount. Perfect balance. That a perfect balance. <laughs> that'll, that'll help solve any mystery here. So. And this is what you do. You do workshops, correct? Okay. Yes, so we teach people all about the art of cocktail making and mixology. Um, we have our little studio in downtown Bernie. Uh, we also go out to people's homes to teach them um, and guide them through a fun, entertaining experience. So if somebody also wants to have their own soiree, would you be the one that's mixing Mixing up all the magic libations here? Absolutely. So we actually have a team of bartenders that go out and do house parties, weddings, uh, birthdays, things like that. Um, so shoot us a message um, and give us a theme and we're always up to the challenge. Are mixed cocktails and you know even from the olden days kind of more in fashion these days? I would say classic cocktails are in fashion. People are very curious about it. Actually this um, Arsenic and Old Lace is a classic cocktail. Um, it was written about in 1917 and even before. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's nice to do it in batches like this, right? Absolutely. It is important to, I think, to at least have one in a batch, especially um, if it's very strong like this, you can make sure that you're balancing it out and making sure there's enough dilution in there so people, so that you can be responsible when yes. cocktails. Yes. <laughs> one mystery solved mm -hmm. was the live aid. All right, enjoy that drink. And for yes. more information yes. on Assemble Cocktail Workshop, you can head to our website. SALive.com, click the As Seen on the SALive tab or scan the QR code on your screen. I love all the little detail, Lillian. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, yes. Still ahead on SA Live's Halloween Who Done It, where you can enjoy a great meal this fall, just like our victim did for his last meal. And next, we unravel the mystery of Halloween candy leftovers and the yummy recipes you can make out of them. S.A. Live's Halloween Whodunit. Pleto Rodriguez was found dead on the S.A. Live set. Fiona hired private investigator Mike Osterhage to solve the crime. And Mike retraced Pleto's last steps to a Halloween party the night before. Well, if it wasn't the drinks and it wasn't the ghost, I don't have any suspects left. I gotta think fast. Well, you know what really helps me think? Candy. And the real crime is all that leftover Halloween candy from that party. Who helped plan this party? What to do with the leftover candy? Somebody else who was at this party, this lady over here. Christy Cuthbert. Hope the candy yeah. was safe at that party last night. She knows how to do that. No bones about it. <laughs> what you got for us there? Well, tonight actually is Halloween, so maybe let's focus on safety for the kids. I like that. All right, well, for starters, let's label them because you don't want to send them out trick-or-treating if they get lost and you can't find them, right? So we made bracelets and some address return address labels, put mom and dad's name, just mom and dad, and their phone numbers on them. And you can either strap that on as a little bracelet or just take the stickers and stick it on their backs so they don't automatically pull it off because who doesn't love to pull off the sticker? And if they get lost wandering around the neighborhood, you can just point here and have somebody call mom and dad. So no mystery is going to need to be solved when you've got your little trick-or-treater label. There. Not when you have your information right there on their wrist. Great idea. You also want to make sure they're lit up. So obviously they're in every store right now. Glow necklaces, glow bracelets. You can get reflectors for shoes, wrists, hats, costumes. And I always 
always like to say, regardless of the costume, when they're headed out trick-or-treating, keep comfortable shoes on, tennis shoes, so that if they're going up and down curbs or walkways, they're not tripping on their little high heels or whatever. Or their little costume shoes. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and look both ways to investigate what's going on on the streets. Yes, 100%. All right, leftover candy. We love it. What we do I do with it? We love leftover candy, too. The problem is there's still going to be that bag in December filled with all the ones that nobody likes or yeah. you forgot about that you put in a drawer. Yeah. So we have a number of things we can do. Number one, almost every school has some kind of orthodontist or dentist doing a candy buyback. Your kids can take the candy to school and donate it. There's also a really great uh, national organization that's located here in San Antonio called Soldiers Angels. And they have collection sites throughout San Antonio uh, that will be starting up or are, are open now during Halloween where you can take the candy and donate it. They will pack it up for the troops. You can mail it in too. So that's another way to send it off. And then we have two recipes. We just make cookies and we take all the chocolate candy bars and we cut them up and make delicious kind of monster cookies to send in lunches for the next several weeks. You can freeze that dough up, use it for weeks to come. So you um, can freeze the dough and just keep using it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. You can freeze cookie dough up for a couple of months. We put some Twix and some Reese's Pieces in those ones, but really any kind of candy you like, you can dice up and throw into a, to a, a standard chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, yeah, look Don't at that. Mind there. If I do right there. Yeah, and there's your, you know, your lunch snack for the next several weeks. And then our favorite in our house, it, you can try to turn it into a trail mix or some kind of checks mix to throw in lunches or, you know, snacks on the way to sports for weeks, but we call this Halloween hash, and it is so delicious. <laughs> so it's a mixture of bugles, corn checks, and pretzels. And Fiona, if you want to mix it up with my little skeleton hands. And then once you have them all mixed, you add whatever leftover Halloween candies you want to add. Um, I'm not a big candy corn person, but I like it in this mix because it adds a sweetness to the salty, um, which is really good. And again, whatever you like, maybe you can make a different batch. Can, whatever that you That can be want. the base and then everybody can add their own candy. It feels a little healthier because it has like cereal in it yeah. versus just like throwing candy corn in their lunch bag. Another mystery solved, healthy yeah. candy. You can throw nuts in it. You can throw, you know, some craisins, raisins, whatever makes you feel like a better parent. Uh, we're having put in. And then what we do, you put some Reese's pieces and whatnot, you take some butter and some brown sugar and vanilla, melt it together in the microwave so you get a nice little caramely sauce, spread it all over, mix it again and let it dry. And it is the perfect combination of salty and sweet. We got some there, yeah. And you can even wrap it up and give it to neighbors as just, you know, a fall gift. It looks beautiful and it tastes, I mean, we could blow through a bowl of that watching a movie together in no time. That is fantastic. Yeah. This is really good. Yes. And you can take it, put it in small little Ziploc bags, put it in lunch yeah. as a little bit of a treat. Yep. 100%. A snack on the go for sports or wherever you're headed. Love that. You have so many wonderful ideas mm -hmm. and four boys, right? Four boys, yeah. she knows no mysteries when it comes to dealing with the boys. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. all right. Halloween's one of our favorites. And of course, Mischief Makers book series. Yep. Fourth of the Mischief Makers books due out before Christmas time. And we're really excited about it. And yeah, just happy to be here and part of the Halloween fun. Wonderful. Well, if you'd like more information about Christy Cuthbert and the Mr. Pinker series and all of these great recipes and tips and everything you need to go, no, no mystery unsolved when it comes to her. Just go to essaylive.com, click on the Essay on Essay Live tab, or scan the QR code right there on your screen. So it wasn't the candy mm -hmm. that killed Cletto. Mm -hmm. Still ahead on SA Live's Halloween Who Done It, we investigate Cleto's last meal and grab a bite to eat from this local restaurant that's serving authentic Mexican family recipes. And next, we call in some reinforcements for this murder mystery. It's a crime scene investigation technique that kids can apply to solve a mystery. YouTube. Yeah, all of your favorite DIY videos, food, drinks, tips, and tricks. If you've seen it here, it's on the SA Live YouTube channel. Just search KSAT SA Live on YouTube and like, subscribe, and ring the bell.
Previously on SA Live's Halloween Who Done It, Pletzel's body was found on the SA Live set. Fiona hired Mike P.I. Osterhage. Mike retraced Pletzel's last steps to a Halloween party. It wasn't the ghost or the bartender or party prepper Christy Cuthbert. Looks like he needs some help to solve the case. This murder mystery is becoming impossible to solve. Time to call in the cavalry. I'm gonna solve this crime. I'm gonna need crime scene forensics. And I'm gonna have to call in the best forensic scientist in town. Andrea Cook, mad scientist at large. Welcome. Thank you. I'm always happy to solve a crime with science. Always happy to help you solve a crime with science. Thanks. How are we gonna solve this crime? I'm stumped. Uh, well, it's okay. I'm gonna help you. I would always try fingerprints first. That's great just clues. what I was gonna say. Well, I thought so. Yes. Because you know that everybody has a unique set of friction ridges on their fingertips. Yes, I did. Yes. So friction, fric You call them friction ridges? Friction ridges. Yes. I didn't know that's what they were called. Well, um, well some people just call them prints or ridges, okay. but yeah, friction ridges. And what happens is we leave them everywhere because the sebaceous glands in our skin um, create oil, and therefore they're always in the ridges and they leave our prints. So unless your culprit wore gloves, you're going to find some prints. Well, in the summertime around here, I doubt if somebody wears gloves. So Touché. how do we get started? We need to dust for prints. So I have created um, like a handprint on each of these um, um, laminate pages. Mm -hmm. We have um, just finely, I'm using chalk powder, okay. um, which you can do with the kiddos, can wash off, get in there, get on a brush. We're using makeup brushes as we do, you know, mm -hmm. TV, and just hey. go right over it. Okay. I'll be darn. Okay, do you see the prints? Solving the crime as we speak. I know. Well, not really, because that's my handprint. You did it. I, I did not. I was not oh. invited to said party. Ah. Yes, okay. it's okay. But I can see it. I can see my print on there. Very nice. Palm print and the finger ridges. Now, you know there are three types of fingerprints. Uh, sure. Yeah, of course you do. Yes. So we have the arch, the loop, and the whirl. Do you know which type you, you fit into? What category? Um, uh, I'll say loop because I'm kind of loopy. That tracks. Okay. But let's let's find out. There's another way we can do this, okay? So we've dusted for prints right here. Very mm -hmm. nice. If you hold it up to the light, you can see it, but I like to have paper underneath to kind of get it going. Yours is not, you made a lot of mess. It works. It works for you. Now. We are going to actually learn how um, junior detectives at home can plant a fingerprint. I used a light bit of lotion for this shiny paper, mm -hmm. but it, we could also do it with pencils. Ah. So take your paper, mm -hmm. make a rubbing. Oh, very fun. Okay. Um, point your finger, please, and then rub in your graphite. Just situation. rub all around? Rub. Okay. Look at your finger. It should look awesome. Yee. Okay. Yes. Now, you could also use right now, you could use your magnifying glass. Ooh, Check it out. I'm I definitely see. a whirl. I see, I need loopy? to wash my hands. But. Yeah, okay. So then you take a piece of tape, um, clear tape, scotch tape is fine. Mm -hmm. Put it over your fingertip and then gently peel and place on paper and it's going to leave your perfect print. I'll be darned. Now you could use that, your magnifying glass and check it out, but. That is fantastic. And like yes. you said, junior crime scene detectives at home can do this. And you go to parties, schools, yes. anything, right? We do. We even have um, a secret agent lab workshop where we could do crime solving with your junior detectives at your house. And so, do you know who, would, who did it? I do not know who did it. It, but I didn't find any fingerprints besides ours. However, if you observe over here, I did find some lovely um, fajita meat. Ooh. Mm. Well, if you'd like more information about Mad Science with Austin San Antonio, just go to salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. You know what? I think it's whirls. No, I'm a whirl. I thought you were loop. I don't know. Mm. Oh, you're loopy. I know.
previously on SA Live's Halloween Who Done It. Pleto was found dead on set. Mike's a PI. Fiona hired him. No one at the Halloween party did it. Mike got help from a forensic scientist, and now we need your help. Who do you think the murderer is? Scan that QR code on your screen to vote and keep watching to find out who done it. So the night of the party, did Kletto mention he was headed anywhere else by chance? Yes, he said he was headed to his comedy show at Mi Familia. Ah, I see. Now perhaps there was a one-liner that led Kletto to the end of the line. <laughs> you, you still, uh, we got cut off that. End of the line. <laughs> had his last meal at Mi Familia. No one has more mystery shrouding them than that corporate general manager of Mi Familia, Gerardo Carvajal. Mike, why are you staring at? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. So, so you've recreated the last meal that Cleto had that night. I don't know well, what it is, but oh my goodness gracious. Oh, I cooked this. all of his meals. Oh I didn't have, I had no idea this would be his last meal. This looks like quite a feast here. Maybe he just ate too much. What are we making here, Gerardo? Well, this we have a discada. Great. It's called a discada matona. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it translates a killer discada. Ah, mm, okay. So, this is what we're going to do here. We're going to add a little bit of uh, fat here. Mm -hmm. A little our onions. And we've got just about everything you can think of in the uh, meat department here. So we've got some oh, onions, some tomato. Tomatoes. We have uh, the, the chorizo. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So we're going to cook all this for about five minutes. But we got some meats that are already being pre-cooked. So we got pork here, beef. Thank you. And we have country sausage. This is kielbasa product, which is great. Uh huh. Bacon. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ham. Oh. So this just looks absolutely fantastic. And then this is one of those dishes that just has to, you cook it and you cook it and let all the flavors come together. They all come together. They'll give it about 10, 15 minutes and everything will be wonderful here. After about 15, 20 minutes, this is what we have. And you want to finish it up with that beer in there. Oh, beer goes in here too. Well, yes. That's the killer part. All those great meats and then beer on oh, top of yes. it. Boy, you're going after every man after and everyone's heart you make yourself a Taco. And put a little bit of this on here. So tell me all about uh, Me Familia here, what you got going on as far as specials and everything else coming up. Well, we have a lot of things coming up. Uh, we have this special, which is a um, discada, will be available till uh, Halloween. Okay. And so then through. we have a lot of things. So right after Halloween, we have Dia de los Muertos. We have festivities going on for Dia, uh, for Dia de los Muertos. We also have live, live music here. We have comedy every other Wednesday. And then we have live music every other Thursday. We have trios every Friday, mariachi Saturdays, and then we finish on Sunday brunch with a piano. Oh, wow. So it's okay. a lot of things going on. That's got a little bit of a kick to it, too. But oh, yes. I think I could almost eat that whole dish. This is really, <laughs> really tasty. Be, so, be, be careful. That's what happened to Cleto. And this is what happened. He ate too much he of this? He ate too much, yes. You think? So who do you, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of, lot of folks were there. Anybody kind of suspicious? Well, there was over 200 people here and, and to me everybody looks suspicious I try to keep everybody here for you to interview them but um, they all walk out what do you think they'll find out are you implying there was me I didn't say that you got a guilty conscience sir no I cooked his meal you cooked his meal okay. but that's it well, I'll tell you what. I saw a young lady that came in and gave me a package to put it into his meal but uh, I didn't mm. One thing. This is a fantastic meal, I'll tell you that. Any uh, any ideas on anybody else who might have killed him? Yes, I have this uh, young man also trying to get his uh, spot every other Wednesday. Maybe we should talk to him. Okay. 
Well, we're going to talk to him in a minute, but don't forget, Mi Familia out here at the Rim. At the Rim. If you would like more information about Mi Familia Restaurant, all the other Cortez family restaurants, oh, and these delectable dishes and all the events they have going on, just go to their website, LaFamiliaCortez.com. Stick around because SA Live's Halloween Who Done It mystery is about to be solved. We find out who the murderer is, or at least I hope we do. Celebrate San Antonio with us on YouTube. Yeah, all of your favorite DIY videos, food, drinks, tips, and tricks. If you've seen it here, it's on the SA Live YouTube channel. Just search KSAT SA Live on YouTube and like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Previously on SA Live's Halloween Who Done It, Cleto died. Fiona hired Mike as a PI. Mike retraced Cleto's steps. Now he's close to finding the killer. Can you solve the murder before Mike? Who do you think the murderer is? Scan that QR code on your screen to vote. And keep watching because we're about to reveal Who Done It. Well, I suppose you're all wondering why I gathered you here today. You know, once you've eliminated all of the impossible, what remains, no matter how improbable, is the truth. All of you were involved in Cleto Rodriguez's final moments, and one of you is the murderer, and I have no idea who. So I'm gonna ask you nicely, please tell me the truth. I'm just here to be supportive. Hard no. Well, I'm just taking notes. Your silence is deafening, mascot. A likely story. I'm just happy to be here. I don't know what's going on. It was me. Why are you looking at me? He just admitted it. At last, I've solved it. It's Jeff. I knew it was you all along. And you did it because, why'd you do it? Well, because I'm funny and, and I wanted to be a comedian, but, but Cleto was stealing all my jokes. Let me guess, you wanted to be a comedian and Cleto was stealing your jokes in the spotlight, you were jealous. And that is no joke. SA Live's Halloween Who Done It Murder Mystery isn't over yet. There's more than one way to slice open this enigma covered secret sauce. Don't go anywhere. We see the alternate endings next. Previously on SA Live's Halloween Who Done It, Cleto died. Fiona hired Mike, and Jeff was revealed as the murderer. But is that how it really happened? time this week. Halloween is gonna get me this season. Fiona? Fiona? Hello? Fiona? Fiona? Hello? Mike. 
life, though. He's in. Mike, wake up. Uh, wake up. Uh, Did you fall asleep? It was a dream. You were there. Who? Where's Where's Plato? Is he dead? No, he's getting ready to do the show. He is. And but I have no a... responsibility on what dream sequence Fiona does. But it was a mystery, and I can solve it. I know I can. Let's go. The show is this way. Oh yeah. <sighs> San Antonio with us on YouTube. Yeah, all of your favorite DIY videos, food, drinks, tips, and tricks. If you've seen it here, it's on the SA Live YouTube channel. Just search KSAT SA Live on YouTube and like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Thank you very much for watching our Halloween special and participating in our murder mystery. And well, I hope your detective skills were a little bit better than mine. Speaking of which, where is Glendo? <laughs> oh, well, we want to say a big thank you to the St. Anthony Hotel for letting us use their space. To Mi Familia and Gerardo Carvajal for their food and time. Glendo Rodriguez for being our fabulous victim. Assemble Cocktail, Christy Cuthbert, Andrea Cook with Mad Science of Austin and San Antonio, and a big thank you to Starline Costumes for dressing our cast, as well as Spirit Halloween. All right, we want to leave you with just a few of the bloopers that we, <laughs> that we had while shooting all of this. Hey, have a very safe and happy Halloween, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Give me a quick clap, clap sync. All right, go ahead. I don't know what's going on. I'm just here to be supportive. No, you're not. I hired you. That was a close one. Almost got me there. Whew. Man, when was the line again? Third time this week. Third time this week. Ah. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I was wondering, well, perhaps there was a one-liner that Kleto, there was a one-liner that that led Kleto, sorry. Let me try that again. That led Kleto to the end of the line. <laughs> Get it? End of the line? Yeah, one line. Three, two, the end of the line. <laughs> Get it? The end of the one line. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna do the phone thing, right? Yeah. The phone, go ahead. Why are you looking at me? He just admitted it. I saw it. I knew it all along. It's been you, Jeff. <laughs> Any time now, right? Oh. You <laughs> Solved it. You always use receipts for those parts? Yes. You're blocking my camera. <laughs> Where did he go? Alright, All right. the first one was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Drinks, and it wasn't the ghost. I don't have any suspects left. I gotta think fast. Well, you know. Can you let him finish?